Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Get Fit With Me, expanding your physical and mental fitness group. This group is for individuals who are ready to expand both their physical and mental fitness while looking for support and looking to support others all along that journey. Fitness and nutrition and mental fitness and all of it is a journey that is hard. And it gets easier over time, but if we can have support, especially when there is that roller coaster up and down and we need a little bit more help, this is the group. Come to us for support. I'm here showing up every Thursday. We go live in Zoom. So if you're watching on Facebook, click that little link and jump on in the Zoom room with me. It is a movement workshop. We alternate every other week between a mental fitness kind of training and a movement workshop because movement is important for everyday life and so is our mental fitness. So this week, as we get into it, we are, it, like I said, it is a movement workshop and we are talking about strengthening our core. But before we get into that, we have two new members in the group. We have Amanda and Renee. I am super excited to have you both in the group this week. Thank you for joining, finding us, coming in, and being part of this community here. If you guys ever have any questions, please reach out to me. And those of you who have been in the group for a while, if you still have questions, reach out. You don't have to be new to reach out and ask questions. Last thing before we get into our fun little movement workshop, these ones are usually quick, anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how much talking I do and how many questions are asked. And we have somebody jumping in right now, which is perfect. I want to let you guys know that the Commit to Your Health program is launching November 21st and runs through January 1st. There are only four spots left for this program. So if this is something that you want to learn just a little bit about, whether you are super ready to commit to your health or you are just want to learn about it, jump, drop health in the comments and I will jump on a call with you to discuss the details. Like I said, there's only four spots left. So if you have any interest at all, drop that health before it fills up. Let's get into it. So we have Kathy and Pam today on our call. Do you guys want to take a second to introduce yourself? And so who you are, where you're from. And today's question is, do you strengthen your core throughout your week? Do you do specific exercises or structured um, work to strengthen your core? And Pam, let's start with you because I saw you unmute. I'm Pam, I'm from the Thumb of Michigan. And no, I do not. Perfect. And are you, so is the reason you're here to learn how to incorporate some things to add into your week? Yes. Awesome. Well, you're going to learn three awesome moves that you can do every day if you would like to, to help strengthen your core. Happy to have you okay. here. Kathy, how about you? Who, who are you? Where are you from? And why are you here and do you strengthen your core? Kathy from Lansing, Michigan. And um, actually, I did it this morning in Laura's class. We uh, worked on core. So I do it um, in classes, and then I also do it at home. Um, I do it through planks. I do it through um, working abs and strengthening my back. Awesome. I love that you threw the strengthening of your back in there. That is a huge part of our core that we forget about. Awesome. Excited to have you both here. I see we have Danielle live, and she loves core work. Core is honestly probably my least favorite thing to do because I always leave it till the end of my workout and I'm tired by the end of my workout, so I don't want to do it. So I've started to reframe how I think about core and I like to incorporate it in the beginning if I'm doing it on my own. So if you know core is something you don't like to do, bring it to the beginning of your workout to help get those muscles nice and warm. So. As always, I have to give you some background on to why this topic is important, why I'm spending time to talk to you guys about it, because if not, it's just me up here gabbing to you, and 
I like to hear myself talk, but you guys may not want that. So what is your core? Your core runs from about middle of your thigh up to that rib cage in a full cylinder. So often we think our core is just this front section and that to have a strong core, you have to have a six pack, you have to have some definition, and that's not the case at all. Your core is the muscles underneath what you can see. I've come to terms a long time ago that I won't have a six pack because I like eating my pizza and I like drinking my beer. But I, just because you don't see it does not mean I don't have it. So core, from here to here. Yes, that means your glutes are part of your core, but today we're gonna focus on this little section all the way around. Why is it important? How many of you have a bladder? How many of you have a bowel? How many of you have a uterus? How many of you move throughout your day, whether it's just to go to the bathroom? If you do movement and you stand and you have a, you have a bladder, you have a bowel, you have a uterus, you need to strengthen those core muscles. If not, we walk like this. We become fatigued so quickly. And to be honest, we've all probably felt this. I know I have. We probably peed a little bit while laughing or jumping around. That's not a bowel issue. That's not a bladder issue. That's a core issue. So it is important for so many reasons. It's important for holding those little things inside our body up in the right spot as well. When should you be strengthening these? You should be strengthening these whenever is most comfortable for you. If you are someone who never strength, who has never done any core strength training, start with just one day a week. If you are someone that does it often, feel free to do it three days, five days a week. I am gonna only show you three movements today because they are the three ba most basic and most pelvic floor intense movements because the pelvic floor is really what we are talking about today. Your core is all around, but we're really hitting that pelvic floor that sits right down here. And it is important for that low back pain. I, I've had, when I moved to a virtual job, I had that low back pain. I had no idea what that was. I didn't have that when I was in person all the time. But now that I'm virtual, that low back pain flares up like no other. And I can tell I've not been doing my core work. So Kathy mentioned earlier that she does some planks and planks are a great core exercise, and there are so many modifications for a plank. The plank hits this whole area, your sides, your inner thighs, your quads, your glutes, everything in that cylinder section is engaged. Today, we have three exercises. You guys are going to get tired of me saying three exercises. Um, we have the pelvic tilt, the howl hold, and the dead bug. I'm going to first give you a re the background on these exercises and why they're important. And then we're going to get, then I'm going to show you, you guys are going to practice, and then we're going to do a little core workout at the end. Like I said, quick 30 to 40 minutes and we are out of here. So first one is our pelvic tilts. This is for that pelvic floor that we all have, whether you are male or female, we all have a pelvic floor. If you are someone who has, has ever given birth, that pelvic floor is probably very, is probably non-existent if you're not doing core strengthening. It is something that we struggle with. It is, this movement is going to help with that bladder control. It's going to help us really precisely work those little pelvic floor muscles. Exercise number two, our howl hold. This is a movement that is great for helping strengthen, strengthen the muscles that stabilize our lower back during exercise and everyday movement. This one has a few different modifications that I'm going to take you through. I want everybody to start with the basic modification where I start, and then you can move through as you need to. Exercise number three is going to be the dead bug. This is a safe and effective way to strengthen and stabilize your core, your spine, your back muscles it is going to help improve your posture and even relieve and prevent some of that low back pain that we all feel at some point in our life. And if you haven't, 
please let me know and tell me your secret because I still even get low back pain every once in a while. So let's move our cameras down. For those of you who are live on Zoom with me and even you guys on Facebook, move your phones down so you can see me. Um, I try not to wear dark colors and I realize I'm in pink and you guys may not be able to see. I'm hoping I should be fine, but I'm gonna take this off because you guys are going to need to see my back a little bit closer. We're gonna first start with that pelvic tilt. So make your way down to the ground. If you are someone who does not like getting to the ground because it is uncomfortable, but you are able to, I strongly suggest that you keep practicing it. It may be awful, it may suck, but the more you practice it, the more comfortable you're gonna feel and getting down, up and down off the ground is a move that we have to do for the rest of our lives. So if you are someone who's watching right now and you can't get up and down off the ground or you are chair bound, shoot me a quick message and let me know. I have a video that I can send you of chair core exercises. Today we are gonna be on the ground though. I will let you stay on the ground, so don't worry, I'm not making it up and down. Let's make our way down here for our pelvic tilt. You are going to lay all the way down on your back. Feet are going to be set up about hip width apart. I'm going to lay down, and I'm going to just put my palms up. Naturally, the first instinct that my back has is to arch. So this hand, I can stick all the way through and tap on the ground. What we are going to do is we are going to get rid of that arch by rotating that pelvis and pressing that lower back into the ground. You are going to feel engagement right here, kind of at the top of that underwear line. And then you're going to release back to that natural spot that back wants to be. Some of you may not have as large of an arch, but some of you may. If you are someone who has a really large arch and you can't get it down to the ground, that's okay. Throw a little, throw your hand under there and just get it close to your hand. We are all different. So let's practice now. Take those feet hip width apart. Let your body be natural. And now I want you to tuck your hips so that that lower back is now pressed in and you are feeling that through that pelvic floor. And maybe you don't know what that pelvic floor is and relax. That's gonna be that spot right above where that underwear sits. As long as you're not wearing high-waisted underwear. If you're wearing high-waisted underwear, think lower. <laughs> Good, let's go one more time with this practice. Think about moving just our hips. Good, and relax. And this is a move that you can practice even just sitting in a chair. The rocking of our hips, you guys can stay down. When I stand here, you can see I have a curvature. All I am doing is I am moving my hips, rotating my pelvis. That is the movement that I'm doing on the ground. It is something that feels uncomfortable and unfamiliar right now. I get it. First time I did it, I was really, I was like, this does not feel right. But what we are going to practice, just like you guys did, is in our exercise, when we go through our full little core workout, we're going to press that lower back in for three to seven seconds and release. We'll press it in and we'll release. And we're gonna do that three times and that counts as one rep. Three times is a good amount to start getting that muscle memory going. You can do this in bed. You can do this on the ground when you're down there. You can even do this seated or standing like I showed you. So that is our pelvic tilt on the ground. You guys can practice one more time. Press that lower back in. Feel that in that lower core. Remember to breathe. We should never hold our breath and relax. So next one we have is I'm going to kind of go out of order here from what I describe these as. We're gonna move into the dead bug as exercise number two. You are going to lay flat on your back, legs come up to 90, toes get pulled back to 90. Right now, I have an arch in my lower back and that's natural. 
So I like to bring my knees close. And then now my lower back's pressed in and bring my chin to my chest. My hands are going to go straight up, pull my shoulders back and down, and I'm holding. I can feel this right here. Oh, oh yes. If you cannot, you can do two things. Take that hand, make sure that lower back's touching the ground, or shift those legs away from you about a half an inch. You will definitely feel that then. Good, and relax. So progression number one is a dead bug hold, just like we did. 90 degrees at the knees and the toes, hold back, shoulders back and down, arms straight out. Progression number two is going to be a dead bug movement. This is where not just the core has to be engaged, but our mind does because there are some opposites that go on. So right up here. If the modification number one was perfect for you, stay there and just watch along. If you are ready to take it up a step, we set up just like for that hold. And then my left arm and right leg are going to extend away from each other while my right hand and left leg don't do anything and come back up. With control. Good. So modification number two, that's what that was. That is a lot more challenging than just the hold. So you choose which one is best for you and work up to the next one. I didn't ask this after the first one. Any questions on the pelvic tilt, unmute yourself and ask or drop them in the chat on Facebook or any questions on our dead bug holds or our dead bug movement. Unmute yourself and let me know or drop them in the chat. I'm kind of watching both real quick. Okay, looks like we are good. If something comes up, just unmute yourself and interrupt me. Um, I get going on this core stuff and I just kind of keep going. So last exercise that I'm gonna show you is our howl hold. Very similar to our dead bug, other than our leg, um, our legs are gonna be straight instead of bent. So, on the ground, lower back's pressed in. I like to use my hands to help bring my legs up. If not, I can, I just, sometimes it struggles to bring my legs all the way there. So bringing my legs up, pressing my lower back into the ground. This right here is modification number one. Lower back's pressed in, legs are straight, or legs have a slight bend. You can do whatever you'd like with your arms as long as it's not pressing yourself up. You can put them on your chest. If you would like to increase this, you're going to straighten those legs even more and lower down to the ground as far as you can while keeping that lower back pressed into the ground. In breathing, legs come together, toes pull back, quads are tight. And then you come back up and into your chest. We never want to go from straight up two straight down. So always come in and then slowly lower them back. All three of these moves as you have, as you have practiced are ones that are hitting all about the same area. So by the time that hollow hold comes through, you guys are probably feeling kind of fatigued in that area. I know I am. So we're going to go through one more time as practice and then we will do a little workout. So on our back pelvic tilt. This time I don't want you to hold it, I just want you to practice a rotating and pressing that lower back in. Ready and press and release. Press and release. Press and release. And one more. Press and release. Good. Bring those knees up here, arms up, and you're holding for that dead bug or you are going into a moving dead bug. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Your choice. Good, and relax. And final one, howl hold. Legs up, either straight and lower, 
or up with a slight bend, keeping those knees. The closer those knees get to the belly button, the easier it's going to be. Good. Any questions before we move on to our workout? Okay. Our workout is going to consist of the three movements we just learned, and we are going to go for time. So I will have my timer going. We're going to do 20 seconds of our dead bugs, 20 seconds of our howl hold, and we are going to do three, three second holds of our pelvic tilt. We're going to start with that pelvic tilt, even though I just went out of order. So we'll do pelvic tilt, hold one, two, three, go back to natural back. We'll, go, we'll hold again for three, natural back, hold for three, natural back. We'll rest for 30 seconds. Then we will go into that dead bug, your choice, whether you're holding or you're moving, you choose the option that is best for you. And then we will have our howl hold, 30 second break in between, then we'll have our howl hold for 20. Any questions on that? Awesome. Make your way, if, you have, if you're not already there, make your way onto your back. We're going to start with that pelvic tilt, I have our timer. Get those feet in a good position. And let's press that lower back in. Hold one, two, three, and relax. And let's go again. Press in, one, two, three. Good, and you have one more. Press in, one, two, Three, good. This is something that you will learn. It's happy when the timer counts and that I don't count. Um, <laughs> I sometimes become a really slow counter for fun. Next one we have is those dead bugs. We still have about 20 seconds. We wanna make sure we give our core a good amount of break in between, especially because we are using the same muscles. So we have about eight seconds left. Let's get, let's get ourselves set up. Lower back pressed in, knees are up at 90, arms are up, and let's begin. Remember to breathe. Lower back, I should not, you should not be put your hands underneath. We are 10, 10 seconds in. Maybe this is where you have to drop, or maybe this is where you're gonna challenge yourself and go for those opposites. Good, we have three, two, one, drop those legs and relax, 30 seconds. And I want, whether you're straightening your legs or keeping them bent is up to you, but I want you to just think about relaxing everything in between. So 10 more seconds here. And we're going up into our hollow hole. So legs up, remember slight bend or straight, and we are going. If you are straight, squeeze those legs together, pull those toes back towards us, and lower as far as you can. If you are staying bent, they don't have to be touching. It's probably gonna feel better if they're not touching. And we're just gonna hold. You can either move, I like to pump my arms to distract my mind. And remember, breathe, that core is nice and tight. We have four, three, two, one. Bring them into your chest and drop them to the ground. Good. Round one done. On to round two. Going back into those pelvic tilts. So, ready? And press that lower back in. Hold one, two, three, and relax. And we're going again. Press in, one, two, three, and, and relax. One more, and go. One, two, three, and relax. We have 30 seconds here, and we're moving into that dead bug. Feel free to 
Grab those knees and give them a little hug if you'd like. Okay, legs come up, knees at 90, toes pulled back. You can always drop your head and shift those knees toward your belly button just like this. And we're going. So you, if I move my knees away, my lower back wants to pop up. So I can put my head on the ground and bring my knees closer. Almost there. We have five, four, three, two, one. Drop those knees and relax. How will hold us next? We have 20 seconds until we go again. Think about your breathing. Really let that belly fill with air. Then exhale it all out. Bring those legs up. We're starting in three, two, one. Pull those toes back. Whether your legs are bent or not, pull those toes back towards us. Press that lower back in, breathe. You have 10 more seconds. We're almost there. Feel free to drop that head if you need to. Three, two, one, and relax. Good. We are gonna go one more round just because I am a true believer that it takes three rounds for us to really feel anything. That first round, we're still learning. Round two, we get a little better. And by that third round, we are perfect and we are feeling all the right things. Are you ready? Last round of pelvic tilts. Get those feet, good position. And let's press that back in. Three, two, one, relax. Big deep breath. Rotate that pelvis, press it lower back to the ground. Three. Two, one, relax. One more here. Rotate and press. Three, two, one, relax. Good. Bringing our feet up about 15 seconds here. I always like to do some ankle circles in between. I mean, it just feels really good. I don't move my ankles like that enough. We're up, bring those legs up, knees pulled back, arms are up, head is either on the ground or lifted and we are beginning. Just 20 seconds, this is our final 20 seconds of work. Remember, if you are ready to move and would like the challenge, same concept goes here. The straighter that leg goes and further it moves away from that belly button, the more challenging it's gonna feel. Three, two, one, rest. Last one here, and then we will do a little wrap up. I know my core is starting to feel tired, but I know how much better I'm gonna feel just after moving from sitting in front of the desk all day, or standing, I should say. We're going in about five seconds. Bring those legs up and begin. Last 20 seconds here. Maybe you're straightening your legs just a little bit further. I know you can. Or maybe you're lowering a half an inch more. That's it. That's all I'm asking is just to push yourself just a tiny bit. In three, two, one, relax. Bring those knees in, give them a nice hug if you'd like. And when you are ready, slowly bring yourself on up. So awesome job today, you guys. I wanna know from Kathy and Pam, and those of you who are watching live on Facebook or you're watching the replay, remember to hashtag replay and let me know that you were re-watching. Which out of these moves was your favorite? Have you done any of these before? And what are you committing to? What is your action that you are going to take from now until next week? And Kathy, let's have you go first. I have done these before. 
Um, I do like doing them. Um, it's kind of like getting back to basics and something that we don't often do, but we should do more of. Um, I do like the uh, dead bug one with movement. And um, my commitment will be this week when I'm a commercial break or whatever, just get down and do them. I love it. And I like that you said, bring it back to basics because you're right. This, these are very basic moves. These are moves that I start everybody off with, but until we master these, we can't move on to the fun stuff to say. And our pelvic floor and the stabilization that these three moves provide allow for so much strength when we move on. I love that you are going to get down on the floor and do these on commercial breaks. Comment and let us know how that goes. I say that so often. I never actually do it. So <laughs> let us know when you do it to prove okay. to us that we can actually do it on commercials. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Kathy. Yep. Pam, how about you? What did you learn? What did you like? Um, just learned that it doesn't have to be complicated. Just get on the floor and do it. And... Can already, I can already feel it working <laughs> or that I've worked muscles that aren't used to being worked. So yeah, Good. I will and do these a couple times this week. Awesome. Are you thinking of, so when you say do them a couple times this week, what does that look like for you? What, how many times and in what um, capacity? Is it all three, just one of them? Um, all three, maybe three times this week. Three, awesome. three, three, right? <laughs> three, three, three. It's easy to remember it that way. Yeah. <laughs> if so, once you figure out what days you're going to do these on Pam, either shoot me a message or comment on, under here so that we know, and then okay. we check in, and then we can check in next week and see how it went. Sounds good. Awesome job today, guys. Any questions for me? I will, like I said, we I want to, I keep this to about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I want to make sure I'm I'm honoring your guys' time because I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here with me and to be learning. No questions, concerns, comments? Awesome. Well, let's get out of here. If you guys have anything that comes up later on, comment it on the Facebook in the live or shoot me a message. I am here to support at every step of the way. I will see you guys all next week. Oh, next week we are talking about reframing our mindset. So if that is something that you think you probably struggle with in some way, I know I do when it comes to chores around the house. We're going to work on reframing just little bits and pieces to help put us in a more positive state and will allow us to make moves forward. If that is something that you find as interesting as I, as I, as I do, as you can tell, then join us next week, Thursday at 3 p.m. I will see you guys then.